stop these headlines coming in every day, every day. So there we are. But um, the, pa the pound is edging up on that uh, wonderful news, and presumably it will just uh, keep on edging up now. Uh, now that this uncertainty, uncertainty is out of the way, and maybe that's why the FTSE ra rose so much yesterday as well. But um, we shall see how things pan out. Uh, just wanted to look at uh, where the markets um, are, the movers of the day. I suppose it's uh, on the DAX, which is um, up uh, what, over 80 points at the moment. Obviously, records on Wall Street. Uh, celebrating Kim Jong-un's uh, latest missile uh, flying around to Japan. I'm sure the Japanese were delighted. Um, uh, well, they don't seem to be that bothered because they don't do anything about it. But uh, uh, dollar yen, 111.50, uh, or just under 111.50. It's been on the weak side uh, uh, recently, uh, presumably anticipating such moves from North Korea, um, as you would expect. Uh, gold edging higher as well towards $1,300, as was uh, hinted at yesterday. But uh, the big move of the day, I'm like a broken record, really. Um, this market, as you know, I, I do uh, love, and uh, it's not let me down so far. Uh, 10,400, I think the peak there, 10,894 on Bitcoin, up nearly 5%. So uh, uh, as, as I said, uh, I've said previously on the show, it's, uh, once, you, once you're into Bitcoin, it's difficult to look elsewhere. Uh, makes other markets look rather tame, uh, even if it all ends in tears, which uh, presumably... Um, if you're a moral person, uh, it will, because uh, it's uh, so far been rather too good to be true. Uh, looking at the detail of the uh, major markets uh, on the screen here, uh, with the, 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 the majors there, um, following on from dollar yen, really, we had the uh, uh, recently good signals, a bit of a flip overnight on this parabolic, which is what you tend to get, but uh, 111.70, a block of resistance there for this, uh, for this cross at the moment, and uh, presumably people would be trading against that uh, selling with a stop loss uh, just above that at the moment. Um, as far as the target is concerned, uh, you could probably see that uh, we've got this uh, progression to the downside that's uh, uh, continuing here, um, trend channel uh, heading towards the, uh, uh, say, 109.50 zone, so we'll see how that pans out over uh, the next few uh, sessions, next few days probably. Um, that line's gone all gone astray, but we'll go on to the next market. Um, as far as um, the euro is concerned, uh, had a decent signal on the 15-minute uh, chart um, at the start of the week, and that uh, went from what's at 1119 to uh, 1825. Still, that's a rather modest compared to what we saw last week, but uh, edging up towards uh, breaking resistance in the uh, the 11870 uh, area. Uh, and that would get us back on the long tack again for the euro, but uh, uh, obviously inverse to the pound at the moment. Pound itself on the five-minute chart, uh, we had that big move yesterday evening, presumably on the leak of that uh, divorce bill um, uh, scenario. Uh, very bullish at the moment. It's just a typical thing you see with a push higher, consolidating at or above a previous peak, uh, which in this case was around 133.40, and then moving up to the next uh, leg. Uh, this looks as though it's going to hit 135 relatively easily. Uh, the way the way we're going at the moment, um, stop losses below 133.80 uh, at the moment. I would suggest, and uh, looking for a progression, uh, at least on the five-minute uh, chart towards uh, 134.70 uh, for the first part of today. Uh, on to the uh, uh, dollar Canadian, uh, which. Uh, was a stunning move at the beginning of the week, but rather rather like the pound actually, in the sense that you had that uh, up move there on the uh, the 15-minute uh, chart consolidation uh, above a previous peak, which in that case was uh, 127.46, and then the second part of that move uh, still could probably still could possibly rather take out um, those peaks towards uh, 128.50 uh, before this is done, given that the uh, strength of that uh, turnaround there that we saw. Uh, and the stop loss uh, really back below the 127.80 uh, level at the moment. That parabolic line seems to be a reasonable place uh, for a, a trading stop on the move higher. I uh, couldn't uh, afford to mention or to miss out mentioning um, gold after the nuclear um, uh, events. Uh, here we were looking for 1,300 to be hit, uh, but we had a sort of setback back towards the 1,290 area. Uh, that's rather puts me more in the bullish stance in the sense that this market is uh, ready to go higher but wants to flush out the last of the week longs. Uh, so 12.95, uh, 
above that. I think we can hold that uh, early in this session. Uh, we'll probably have another go on the 1300 area um, later on today. Um, looking for a progression, uh, something like this, with a trend channel uh, uh, running through the with the base run 1293, heading up towards 1302 on that uh, particular situation. Obviously, the uh, indices went wild yesterday, led by the Dow. Um, here you can see that uh, uh, parabolic, five-minute parabolic uh, did well on the Dow, as, it, as you would expect in a trending situation. Uh, nice little uh, flush out there uh, before the next move there, so that really shows the, the, the momentum that this market has. Uh, trend channel heading uh, higher in the way that I'm drawing at the moment, uh, and that would be pointing, I suppose, towards that... Uh, uh, at 23,950 zone. So there may be another 100 points on offer in pretty quick uh, time uh, for the Dow and uh, really really is powering ahead. Obviously the FTSE helped along by the Dow and maybe, maybe the, the Brexit bill uh, resolution. Uh, here we've had uh, the, really the moves from uh, beginning of the week uh, with that beautiful signal there on the five minute parabolic uh, the sell did okay, and we're just actually going to the buy now at 74.40 uh, ish. So we'll see if we can retest that 74.70 uh, later in today's session. Stop loss back below 74. Uh, well, say I suppose 20 would be uh, safe, or would appear to be safe rather on that situation. Uh, on the DAX, uh, that's the one minute, but we'll just get back to the, the one minute signals again. Um, we had a decent move uh, uh, overnight for this market, gap higher as well. Um, probably looks better on the five-minute chart, I suppose. Yes, there we are. Um, so just echoing the, what we've seen on the uh, on the Dow. Uh, nice progression there um, above that parabolic, and uh, looking for, uh, I suppose, at this stage, 13,200 uh, for this market uh, as a reasonably modest uh, target, given how strong that price action is. Finishing off with um, um, Bitcoin. Uh, this is the 15-minute chart. I drew those uh, parallels, um, uh, the trend channel uh, yesterday. Uh, that was pointing towards uh, what's 10,400, something like that. Um, didn't expect it, obviously, to be hit so easily. In fact, overshot so easily. Interesting, we, we hit the top uh, or went through the top of the channel and then came back and uh, tested the bottom of it. So uh, pretty volatile indeed. And uh, one would expect it to get more volatile around that 10,000 mark. Um, Interesting that we've settled well above it. Normally, we, you would have thought there'd been, there would be more of a battle as far as the price action there is concerned, but we stalled around the 9900s zone um, and then went just straight through that 10,000 level. Something I was actually thinking, that's what tends to happen, actually, just the market pauses at a particular juncture, uh, enough to give the people who are um, trying to sell the top uh, time to get in and then to blast them out uh, after that. So uh, clearly a lot of people were not expecting 10,000 to, to break so easily. That's why we had the move uh, through uh, that level so viciously. But uh, that's my roundup on the price action front. Uh, hopefully we can go over to uh, Russell Jones now and speak about stock market. How are you today, Russell? Oh, very well, very well. Good morning, guys. Uh, very, very quickly, I'll go through a few of the highlights from yesterday. Uh, it was said on the program that Shell had gone to cash in terms of its dividends. It reflected it, uh, it put 30 points on the FTSE. It was up 4% on the year shares and uh, on its B shares up 3.7%. So, uh, very good performance there by Shell. Uh, it depends, obviously, what's going to happen on the OPEC extension this week uh, if it will continue with some form of momentum. Similarly, obviously, Ocado, I didn't mention it yesterday, uh, second highest short on the market. Incidentally, for people who don't know how to access the short index, www.shorttracker.co.uk. When you look at it, it is the close of the previous day. It's not a live, it's a previous day. But uh, Ocado is still 16.1% shorted, it's second highest on the market. Some people, even the FT this morning, attributed the, the gain to shorts closing, well that wasn't the case, so obviously that uh, new deal with Casino Fire in France using their delivery platform was positive for them. I personally still don't like the share, but uh, that's my choice. Patisserie, I, I the, mentioned the, it yesterday. I just wanted to just say about it, Ocado, I mean it's, it's one of the, it is, it is highly shorted, I think it's a company though that uh, um, I think it has friends in rather high places from uh, Stuart Rose um, downwards and uh, in the market's got that 
I just got it wrong. I mean, you know, it's not it's not a Carillion. It's not you know it is is it's a company which is really uh, favoured as being like the this, the new economy heroes, um, like the Amazon, like the Amazons, etc. And I think it's just a mistake to go sh short of that stock. Um, obviously, we'll see how the market goes, but uh, um, it, it always manages to pull something out of the hat. And it, not making a profit doesn't seem to be a problem. Uh, Patricia, I mentioned it yesterday, but the previous day went up 8.37. Well, it went up further 7.13, which is a lot for two days consecutively. But what it does show is the momentum in some of the shares, when they have a good run on one day, quite often it's continuing for two as a kind of trend overall on the market. So I just want to emphasize that. Uh, I did go into Bitcoin myself yesterday. I mentioned on the program that uh, I went to a safer route, which I perceived, which is obviously a tracker fund arrangement, um, which I went through AJ Bell on, um, and obviously on the two of those, one of them went up by 4.48% on the day, and the other one went up by 5.14%. That is X, uh, bit XBT and bit XBTE. The latter one is in euros, the first one it is in krona. Now, uh, that was with it closing below 10,000. Now, I've been up since about three, and as I've been looking at markets, Asia, etc., I've been following Bitcoin. The volatility is just incredible. Now, obviously, as Zach has said, it's about 10,400 as we speak. Um, but at about 5.30 this morning, it's 10,500 to buy as we speak now. Uh, at at 5.30 this morning, it surged up to 10,800. Within 10 minutes, it dropped to 10,000, as Zach pointed out and then it's back up again so it's very very volatile and it's not for someone who has got a faint heart um, but it's definitely a opportunity Asia you know I mentioned yesterday on the program 100,000 accounts had opened up in America over the weekend but China and Japan in particular um, are going crazy for it so I, I think that once this momentum continues there's no stop in this this uh, in terms of today's markets um, I've looked at three three stocks and then I've had a message of a colleague in the city which is interesting so I'll just quickly go through these full year results came out from Brewing Dolphin the wealth management services uh, what stands out there is the dividends gone up by 15 percent today with a final dividend of 10.75 and they've emphasized strong fund growth. So I would expect some form of positive reaction to that. Um, Telford Homes, uh, one of the smaller operators, obviously London, known for uh, brown site de development and also uh, doing the loan market, sorry, the rental markets. They buy to rent, which is very, very good. They are updated this morning, dividends up on the interim. 11.1%, 8p, they've already banked 95% of this year's profits. So well, that means they're going to hit their year-end target of 40 million. Um, they've already banked 65% of 2019 profits, which is a 50 million target. So I see that a great stock. It's not necessarily going to move much on the market today. However, it is a gradual riser. So obviously within the housing sector, it's a safer stock than the likes of Berkeley Homes if you're looking at London. It's up 27% year-to-date. Incidentally, Brewing Dolphins up 30% year-to-date. The last one in terms of what I looked at was Softcat, a great stock. It's in my portfolio, up 89% for the year. Like uh, Zach mentioned, you know, new, new, um, p new high PEs. Well, this one's just opened up another branch in the southeast, it's seventh branch, full years expectations are online and it's building on scale and developing offers. That's a great stock as a long term hold. I then had a message and we could have um, a colleague a friend of mine, not a colleague, a friend of mine in the city is fully aware that um, I'm invested in Provident, Moore's Club and non standard finance. Non standard finance has done an update this morning. Now this is pretty good. Um, it's ahead of Capital Markets Day, and obviously the loan book growth, impairment levels, and risk-adjusted margin are all ahead of the company's expectations. But people weren't aware, but obviously, the, the, this is the main beneficiary, along with Moore's Club, of the fallout from Provident on their door-to-door -door lending. So as of the 31st of October, the net loan book has gone up 143 million. 
with uh, which is 20% year-on-year. Year. Impairments have dropped dramatically. This is a tremendous figure for a high-risk loan company to 17.9%. The typical average there is in excess of 30%, resulting in a higher margin. And basically, they've got growth in their home credit book, loan book, and as a result of recruiting 437 experienced agents, which directly came from Providence. And they've had a charge of three million pounds for additional commission, but obviously that's it's going to be a great end of year result. Now that wasn't in the financial calendar. I contacted them directly some months ago and asked them why they weren't doing updates. This has come out, and I would suggest that that is going to be positive on that share, although it is a very low volume traded share. But when the year end results come out, that's going to be positive with a good dividend growth. It's run by the ex-chairman of Providence. Now, on the same basis, Moore's Club. Now, Moore's Club, um, which is now in the hands of controlling um, brokerage by Panama Gordon, um, they have recruited more consultants from Providence. They are the second largest door-to-door -door lender. So I would say that Moore's Club, which haven't done an update today, is going to be definitely a strong buy when the year-end results come out. And now the year-end results will come out um, next year, admittedly, but this is going to be something where you might put 2 or 3% of your portfolio in if you do a lot of shares, similarly with non-standard finance. Uh, I still believe Providence oversold, by the way, but they are not on a recovery, these two. These are both on growth, and it should be positive for both of them. Uh, that's my summary for today, sir. Well, that sounds uh, very, uh, very straightforward and very simple. Um, I'm glad that uh, that Bitcoin went up 10 percent after you announced that you were going into Bitcoin. I think that's oh, uh, yeah, I didn't that's the way. That's the way. That's what we want the show to be: influential on the markets. You know that uh, that uh, they <laughs> yeah, just, whatever whatever we. Should, I've made seventy grand on Bitcoin in two in in twenty four hours now. Seventy grand in well, twenty four right, hours. <coughs> yeah, we, I, I think another seven million to go. Yeah, I still, you know, I I've I put in about let's have a look uh, about fifteen percent of my wealth into Bitcoin, which is more than what they suggest. They suggest only five to ten max. Two to three is the probably, guide. Probably two two percent would be the right amount, but uh, fifteen is nothing wrong with that, is there? No, there's nothing wrong with it, and I want it not if it goes up. Away, <laughs> no. I'll have another. 40, I'll make another forty grand up tomorrow. Well, well presumably so with just, those gains, so you can cool. you can buy all the listeners a pint, can't you? Well, I might buy you a pint, but obviously it just depends how risk averse you are. But obviously this is, this is just going ahead. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Russell Jones. Uh, wonderful as always, and we'll speak to you tomorrow. Um, on to um, Ian Foster, be a winning trader dot com. I hope. Yes. How are you doing today, Ian? Morning. Morning, Ian. How are you, Zach? Good. Oh, I'm enjoying the Bitcoin experience. Well, of course. How could you not look at this? It's, it's nearly as good as the Jimi Hendrix experience. It's that good. <laughs> it is. It's certainly unbelievable. Um, as I say, just when we're on the Bitcoin, this is a 30 minute chart I look, and then obviously I use between a 15 and a 30. But the fact we went after the move over the weekend, Zach, it went into green mode, and the first the first um, blue bar on a 30-minute time frame chart was on um, Sunday evening. Um, at um, you can see here, it began at 2200. So in other words, it closed at, two, at 1030, and there was the signal, and the close there was at 9641, and as you rightly say, it went to a high um, during the night there of 108. Another 1200 point move, unbelievable. But we're preparing. Ian, uh, just on, on, sorry, Ian, on the, on your signals there. Um, as I think I've said to you many times before, it, it seems to be that you know all you do is wait for a blue, a blue bar to be completed, and uh, away you go. Unless there's um, you know an opposing um, you know color change. Um, well, isn't it as easy as just? Isn't it as easy as just you know going in there where you said ninety six forty, and uh, well shutting your eyes maybe, and uh, you know taking the position. It is like the 30 minute chart there, it was green and the first blue bar closed as you say, it was a very small range bar so at that particular time I flicked over to a 15 minute chart 
and you can see there's our 15 minute it was green mode so all I waited was for the 15 minute then to go blue so I knew then the 30 yeah. minute was 15 minute and it actually closed the close of that that was actually 9621 so we got a confirmation on the, on the you know taking the signal from the 30 minute but just trying to perfect the timing a little bit in the 15 minute and I mean look history's fantastic as you know hindsight but it rallied 1200 points we're still in the trade we're still in the trade so we're still up you know you, you can't fail now because you're 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 locking in your profits and, and I mean thank you very much there's a fantastic move and just as your previous speaker has, has spoke he earned that money yesterday and you can see how you can earn it <laughs> but we have to be aware of the risk you know it's a fantastic trade Okay, well, anyway, well, let's uh, go into the normal markets, so back into the world the of reality. Market, yes, again, again, I have to say that um, just on, on, on cable yesterday, um, was in a short trade, was in a beautiful short trade in cable, will I just bring it up here, and I, by good luck, Zach, the power of stops, my friend, and I keep, you know, you, you cannot trade without having a stop in the market, but I was in cable yesterday, from just about, I think 133.02 was my entry level, and I even put it up on my Pelican app, on, on my group, sorry. And by good luck, it had fallen, um, you know, 60, 70 pips. I locked in 50 of the pips, and I got stopped out exactly getting 50 pips after the after the news here. You can see the market greatly reversed from, from the red mode very quickly into, into into green neutral mode. This shock move when, when this... When this um, so-called positive information for the UK <laughs> appeared and we're now in, in, in this mode that you see and I have to say in Brexit from a technical analysis point of view from my price action perspective it is broken through the 134 level and why why is that significant let me just very quickly tell you why it's significant or, or um, tell everyone is the fact that going back on the week that ended the 6th of October we had a very bearish bar and that would indicate that the probabilities of us breaking that low which was 130.26 rather than breaking 134.0009 or whatever the case may be, say 134 dead was much greater and today we actually have done that we actually have done that already, we've made a high of 134.07 and what I have done Zach, there is a, there is, there is a going back to um, <coughs> July Going back to July and um, September, we have got this 134.43 level, but to be quite honest with you, on a very technical basis, I believe any retracement now in cable is actually a buying opportunity. I think we've got over that hurdle that I talked about um, even yesterday perhaps and certainly last week. And you can see also the 60-minute the chart here started to go blue. So you only can trade what you see in front of you, and that's what I see in, in, in front of me as far as cable goes. Um, Euro dollar. Um, I know you've been discussing it a little bit. Yesterday was a bearish bar. Yesterday, bearish daily bar. We've rallied in, inside that bar yesterday. Zach, th this continuation rally until such times that we take this low out, I think it's, a, it's, a, it's an opportunity perhaps to short the market. So my, 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 um, my trading um, style or trading technique today would be to look to see is there a short signal anywhere below yesterday's um, high in, in the euro dollar I know there's a key level there 11846 all you can see at this minute in time is blue bars and there's nothing wrong with that but it is a counter trend trade against the daily time frame price action objective that's all I'm saying in, in, in the euro dollar and perhaps later in the day I would be keeping a very tight eye on this to see are we getting lower lower highs and perhaps the bar starting to go red to see will we achieve to see will we achieve the daily price action objective getting into the um, FTSE um, Zach very very positive yesterday as you know an outside vertical bar to the upside the high yesterday is 74.72 you can see what we've done so far this morning this is where we are we're down at 74.30 I would probably think it's a, it's a, it's a buying opportunity um, positioning yourself long um, and the objective is to buy it as low um, to yesterday's um, low as possible because that reduces your risk. Um, so the lower it goes here, it's a greater buy, and it's, a, it's a less risk with a greater opportunity to take out that 74, 72 level to the upside. And again with the DAX, uh, as you rightly say, look, look what's happened already this morning on the DAX in a five-minute chart. Taking off, Zach, 
So, I mean, all we can see at this stage um, is um, blue bars, and um, I know the Zach or the the Dax uh, made a bit of a move overnight, and certainly on its opening, there's the opening bar, and the official opening price um, in in Germany, and it was a bullish bar. Done a bit of a retracement. So there was your opportunity, perhaps, and there will be further opportunities no doubt throughout the day. So any retracements in the DAX at this stage, I think, are long opportunities also. Okay, and thank you very much. Uh, we're basically out of time for today. Uh, DAX uh, leading the way along with Bitcoin. They've got so much in common, obviously, uh, okay. on the markets. Uh, we'll see how everything else uh, pans out and whether uh, Ian Sigals continue to uh, come up with the goods. But Ian Foster from BeAWinningTrader.com, thank you very much. Uh, for joining us as usual today. Thank you. That's it for today's show. Uh, join us uh, tomorrow at 7.30.